Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. 2017. Welcome back, TNA. Welcome back, HeelCast, doing an actual show with some actual new content. I am your host for the week, watching some football right now, so choke on some dicks, Meryl Streep. With me tonight is the uh, guy who's always here with me, the underscore of brother himself. What's up, brother underscore? <laughs> Not much, man. How you doing? I'd be doing a lot better if uh, Clemson ends up winning this game. But, I would be doing uh, a lot better if Clemson won the game, too. But, uh, you know, we can't win them all. And apparently sometimes we can't win at all. Or maybe we think that we're going to win. And then Anquan Bolden catches a touchdown pass on the last play of the last game of the season. And then Brother Underscore got deleted. By Raven FX Final By Deletion Raven Team. By Raven FX Final Deletion Team. Yes, folks, you got that right. Raven FX deleted Brother Underscore on the final play of the final game of the season after Raven FX had already called Brother Underscore and conceded. And then he won anyway. Adding <laughs> insult to injury. You on your win. He congratulated me on my win, and then they shoved it right up my ass. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all right, Fantasy though. It was fun. Time. It was fun. It was fun. Pretty, I had a blast uh, with it. For the four of us that actually competed in the league, kind of hurls, but uh, there was that. And, you know, it's the uh, return of the heel cast, return to TNA, so we kind of had to do it big this week, am I right? So oh, yeah. we went out, and we got him, the killer of fools himself. FK9, what's up, my man? Quick question. If mixed martial arts is not technically art, what does that make pro wrestling? I've oh, been no. confused about this all day. Oh, no. See, they're both art. And mixed martial arts they is are. back before they changed the definition of art about 50 years or so ago. And and wrestling is most certainly an art form. <laughs> okay, well, why couldn't Meryl Streep just say that then? Because she's, she's an a idiot. butt nut. I've never been so steaming pissed in my life than when I woke up this morning and actually heard that she was bashing football and MMA. And uh, yeah, I'm sure if you think wrestling's any any better in her eyes, you're definitely wrong. Um, just just accept I, your award already, and you know leave the politics, the politicians. And, you know, I mean, for crying out loud, accept your award, be a class act. I don't care who you like, who you don't like, man. That was that was an opportunity for for them to celebrate their industry. Instead, they had to go and ruin their show. By stepping outside the bounds. You know, become an activist if you want to do something. Actually become an activist. And she decided to put down two two other industries on top of it just to make her sound a little bit better. Well, why That's, not? Uh, I mean, she, while you're at it, why not just become just become a complete butt nut? Yeah, I don't know what her beef is with MMA. I don't know what her beef is with pro wrestling or NFL or anything else. But, um, you know... Uh, I mean, I guess I guess I can understand what her beef is with Trump, but none of it. It wasn't a time or place for any of that stuff, guys. Not at all. Yeah, not at all. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, Dummy, uh, yeah. <laughs> or is Eli Drake when you need him? Exactly. Hopefully he's going to be sticking with TNA. But, uh, you know, here's the thing. Meryl Streep, someone's going to make America great again just like someone's going to make TNA great again. And that's what we're here to celebrate. Am I right, gentlemen? Damn right. Good segue. Exactly. <laughs> now, uh, speaking of making things great again, check out TNAasylum.net. The TNA Asylum community is back up and going. Um, and also, you can always check out that one guy. He does that one show on TNAasylum.net. What's it's, He kills oh, cool. FK9. Oh, oh, the straight shooter himself. Mm -hmm. oh, man. Drops Complete it on new him. graphic. I the saw that. Graphic. I liked it. Yeah. And folks, unlike TNA, he is live every week. Very true. Very true. Uh, I we also by screwing around with Photoshop, and it still looks better than the new Anthem graphic that uh, they made for TNA. Well, you, you know, like owls. You know, guys. I, I, I don't have nothing wrong with owls. I just don't see why they should be in a graphic for a pro wrestling show. Well, you know who I think should be doing TNA's graphics. 
Raven Effect, who do you think I should think should be doing it? Talon? Uh, not uh, Josh no, no, no. The man with the best sign in all the Impact Zone. Oh, that's right. Oh, the huh. man. Yeah. Our own, our man. one and only chef with his heel cast sign, folks. In the Impact Zone, chef delivered. He did, chef. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. For those of y'all that missed it, there was a heel cast sign at Impact, courtesy of our man. And do, do we do we do the announcement now? Do we oh. do the announcement? Oh, hell Full no. Full fledged yeah. heel cast member coming to the heel cast. Our man, Chef. Welcome aboard. Chef is going to be heel cast full time now as well. So uh, you got a man who's there at all the Impact tapings. The face of TNA fandom, Chef. Welcome aboard. Thank you for the sign, homie. And I got to tell you guys something. Even Dudette marked out when she saw the sign. She don't watch wrestling. She don't follow the show. But when I was like, hey, do that. Look at that sign. Does that look familiar? She's like, oh, wow. I mean, she like totally flipped out. That That's how you know you've won. When you win do that over on a wrestling show, that was a mark out moment, Chef. Mad, mad props, brother. Mad props. I showed my new girlfriend. She was like, meh, that's cool. I know nothing about wrestling. But anyways, she thought it was cool, too. So uh, thanks a lot, Chef. Anyways, uh, you know, there's this other girl I know, uh, Angela, Angela Campany. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so on Asylum this week, now that you guys know, we had a lot of snow up here in the Northeast. And uh, they started talking about who had the most snow. And apparently it came out uh, that, uh, that, that that Angela is actually from a town called Watertown up in northern New York. It's about an hour north of Syracuse. It's a cute little military town near Fort Drum. And I told Angela that I've been to Watertown and that I would share my Watertown experience. I hear on the HeroCast specifically for Angela. Those of you that don't know Angela, she's been around for a long time. Uh, just, just an absolutely great member of the community. Everybody loves Angela. So, turns out that the uh, water towns and the snow belt, they get a ton of snow there. I've traveled there several times on my way to Quebec to go snowmobiling. But one time, about 15 years ago or so, I had a friend that was stationed at Fort Drum. So we went up, we're going to go four-wheeling up there. So we get there, and it's this beautiful little quaint town right on uh, the Black River. And we go in the bar and we have a drink there. And I mean, you know, you're traveling through nowhere to get there, but when you get there, it's just this really cute town. It's like, wow, this is a great place. So we wound up four wheeling, I guess, about thirty minutes away or so. And and they got they got tons of trails up there, guys. I mean, obviously for snowmobiles, but also for four wheelers. But the neat thing is, is that it's big time potato farming, and they have really, really, really black soil. All the locals were cool, but they really, they definitely liked the folks from uh, from the outside. We had been out all day, throwing mud all over ourselves. I mean, caked from head to toe, uh, you know, barely see out my helmet. Uh, I had so much mud on me. I was a walking mess. I walk into this little grocery store, and like I said, we're about half an hour outside of town. And uh, looking around, I go, man, the girl behind the counter, I think she's checking me out. You know, at first I'm thinking, well, she's probably looking at all the mud on me, but I'm like, no, I don't think that's it. But I'm like, look, you know, dude, you're, dude, you're delusional, right? So I walk outside, and all my buddies start coming. And, Man, she's checking you out. She's checking you out. And uh, and I'm I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe because I was an outsider. You know what I mean? Uh, they don't have a whole lot of people in some of these towns. At any rate, it's definitely stroked my ego for a long time. Uh, and we had a great time there in Watertown. I wish I would have gotten to, to do it again, but alas, you know, we kind of all moved on to do different things. Uh, so, so there you go, Angela. That's my Watertown story. But I will say this. I love places like Watertown. You get fresh, clean air, and you got genuine people. Those are my kind of places. So for those of you that are traveling through northern New York, take a stop in Watertown. Guarantee you'll love the place. Don't run over your daughter's skis either. Or that, yeah. We could. I did that this weekend too. Right over my daughter's skis, right before we were leaving for uh, for a ski weekend. The, not a bright move, folks. Don't do that. Yeah. Thanks for ruining a great story, Raven, with a not so great one. 
That's what you're there for, what bro. I'm here to do. <laughs> Heels for a reason. You know it was uh, negative nine with the wind chill on Saturday. And uh, we topped that with negative 17 with the wind chill yesterday scan. So uh, it was uh, it was a very cold weekend besides. I like it. You know what else I like? That uh, Anthem has completed the purchase of TNA. And in case you didn't know by watching Impact, Impact is now presented by Anthem Sports. And there's Ethan Anthem the third apparently. So uh, I'm going to kick it to you, FK9. What are your thoughts on Anthem completing this purchase of TNA Impact Wrestling Anthem, whatever the fuck it is now called? I think it's really cool because we finally got an answer to the question, what will it take for TNA to change the damn ring apron? <laughs> Seriously, we have been asking this question for years. It's like, why won't they change the ring apron or change the ring ropes or change something when they go to pay-per-view? Why does it always have to be in the impact zone just looking like it does on TV? Can they change the ring apron, change something? Well, they finally changed it. They put the anthem graphic all over the damn ring apron. Uh, it, it's different. I'll give them that. So, good. Um, they didn't get around to changing anything else about the show, except a few ring entrances and you know, theme songs, maybe. But there's that. You know, guys, it, it can't be anything but good if it's going to bring stability to the company. As far as big splashes and major changes, you guys got to remember, Ed Nordholm is brought in. This is what they do. They've come in. And they assess companies. They try to clean them up. Good executive coming into a company never makes a change in the first 90 days. you got to figure out what you've got. With TNA, it might actually take a little longer than that simply because they only tape every 90 days. So what they're doing is they're assessing what they've got. And they're going to figure out what works and what doesn't work. They're going to make some tweaks along the way. You know, like FK9 pointed out. You know, it's it's now got Anthem Sports branding on it. But they're not going to make any major overarching changes. They're going to figure out what's working, what's not working. And they're going to consult with people. You've seen them bring in Jeff Jarrett and Dutch Martel. Mantel. These are po- folks that are going to consult with them and give Ed Nordholm what he needs to successfully run this company. So, so far, I know a lot of people were looking for bigger splashes, but in my eyes, so far, so good. Yeah, it's not Dixie. Thanks, Anthem. Sucks she kept her on, but at least her role is minimal. Hope that bitch gets out the door. Uh, Yeah. Thanks for changing the ring apron. Thanks for bringing us One Night Only Live. Thanks for bringing in Jeff Jarrett and Dutch and someone who knows what they're doing. Please get rid of John Gabriel's fat ass, and please just don't ever let Dixie do anything again. Um, So, uh, yeah, it looks like Dixie's up with little power, small amount of equity, and uh, let's see. She's working on international deals for Anthem Sports. She can somehow get those. Uh, I don't know that she can deliver, but she has those. She's working on the uh, serving on the Fight Network Board of Advisors. Uh, Brother underscore, you got anything you want to add on that? Say on that. This is what you do when you have an old owner that you don't really want to let go of, but you don't want to let do anything either. Uh, Dixie still has a lot of knowledge of the company. She's still somebody that Ed Nordholm and Anthem are going to want to use as an advisor. And she knows international deals, so to have her work on international deals kind of gives her, uh, you know, a pet project, something to do. But she's also been stripped of her power, where she was, you know, really destroying the company uh, at the same time. So this is this is pretty much what you do in these situations. So again, again, not a big splashy thing, you know. I know everybody wants to just see her out the door completely, but this is how you do it successfully. And so far, they're doing the right things. This is probably best case scenario, because if there if there was one aspect of the business that Dixie seemed genuinely good at, it was international expansion. Because, you know, it, it seemed like for a while, it's like every couple of months they were announcing some kind of new international deal. You know? Okay, maybe there was a hiccup when they lost the deal in the in, in the UK or whatever. I don't know what happened there, but it always seemed like they were growing at a pretty steady rate when it came to, you know, their international expansion and stuff like that so if that's what she's going to be focusing on now good let somebody else run the company and if he needs 
to ask a question about this or that. You know, she's there. She knows the company. She can answer him. But when it comes to actually doing stuff for the company, they've got someone else in charge. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I, I actually agree with the FK9. I think that that's the one thing that Dixie actually did do very well was international deals. And to the pet project they've got her is right down her alley. Now, one thing that I did notice uh, is that uh, they have inked a deal now with Hulu. Now, FK9, this is kind of interesting now because you know, you've got Hulu, which is a streaming service, and you've got Impact now as a part of the Fight Network, which has their app. What do you make of this this Hulu deal? How does this how does this play into things? Uh, I think it's it, it's good in that it's another like distribution stream. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but uh, it, it's another way for people to watch the show. Maybe people who don't get Pop TV, uh, which you know could be a lot of people. I didn't even know Pop TV existed until you know TNA debuted on it. But uh, it, it's it's another way for people to watch the show. Uh, maybe people who don't get impact in their area. Maybe people in Britain, I guess. I don't know if they have Hulu over there. But Hulu's cool. Yeah, you know, I used to watch Hulu all the time back when it was free. Now you now you have to pay for it, apparently, so I don't use it anymore. But um, <laughs> it's good. Um, it's good that they're experimenting with streaming services because that's, that's what's killing the DVD industry. That's the way of the future. They, they got to get in on that somehow, some way. So um, it's a step forward technologically for sure. Um, I, I, I think I believe WWE is on there too. So um, good for them. Uh, good. It's a especially good news you know, coming on the heels of them losing the UK TV deal. So it, it's it's definitely a step in the right direction. I honest to God, I think that the uh, the Hulu thing should be pretty big for them. I know Directv doesn't cover or doesn't uh, do Pop TV doesn't hold pop tv and then um from what i heard like fire verizon fios or something is dropping pop so it's another streaming thing you know uh, cable dvd blu-ray all that stuff is kind of going down due to streaming and all that so uh you know people may get what it, what is hulu like a day after it airs or something so like maybe they can get impact on friday night instead of thursday but um it, it's a great thing excuse me a great thing for tna and definitely something in a positive direction, which is good. It seems like uh, some right steps are finally being planted here for the company. I think anything that's going to get more eyes on the product is going to be good. Uh, I will say that uh, the person that posted the thing about uh, Fios uh, retracted it. So that actually turned out to not be true, which is a good thing because I have Fios and, and, and I damn near hit the roof when I heard that. I think, like I said, anything that gets more eyes on the product is going to be a good thing. We're going to see everything's going to streaming. And so what we're going to find is that they're going to get on as many streaming spots as they can. And then sooner or later, there will be some big ones that rise to the top and some other ones will fall off. Uh, Anthem obviously wants to make sure that they're not one of the ones that falls off. So I think it's a good thing for them. Do I think it's big for them? No, I don't think that this is going to you know double their ratings or you know get them back to $2 million or anything like that. But... You know, the market right now for TV deals is very fragmented. And so because it's fragmented and people are going in different directions looking for cheaper alternatives, that the more places that you're at, the better chance that you have. So it's definitely not a bad thing, definitely a very good thing. I just don't know, you know, Raven, to answer the question whether I think it is any kind of a game changer or not, because I really just I don't think it's that. Yeah, it probably isn't necessarily a game changer. Um, you know, you mentioned like what's going to bring the ratings back or you don't think it's going to bring the ratings back. Um, I don't either. But what I think may in time is a return of good old Double J, Jeff Jarrett and uh, Zeb Coulter, a.k.a. Dutch Mantel, a.k.a. I don't know what the hell he was called in the WWE. I know he was Uncle Zebakaya back in the days. Um, Double J, the founder, working with TNA as a consultant. Thank the fuck Christ. Thank you, Double J. Welcome back. Jeff Jarrett is back. FK9, your thoughts. Does this mean it was Jarrett's idea to have Rockstar Spud get jobbed out to a midget? If so, Jeff, you're uh, you're not off to a promising start. Uh, uh, look, I, I tried to cover this on my show uh, the other day. Um, I have mixed feelings. 
Uh, I, I'm not. I, I have. Uh, I haven't always had the highest opinion of Jeff Jarrett. Look, I, I respect everything he's done in the business. I haven't always uh, thought he was the most. Um, God, how do I how do I explain this? Maybe the most selfless or the most forward thinking person in wrestling. I mean, he knows a lot about the product, about wrestling in general. But and there was a time when it seems like a lot of his decisions were really counterproductive back when the whole show revolved around him and he was the world champion for years and years ahead of so many other people who really should have been focused on instead or whatever or whatever. But I think the nice thing here is that we're hearing now that part of the deal of him coming back is that he can't appear on television. And if he's only in a backstage role, it means the show won't be built around him. It won't be built around his wife, most likely, thank God. So he can just focus on helping the people who need to be helped and doing things that need to be done. So I think this is a good role for him. Uh, creatively, yeah, that's a that's a to be continued. I'm not always the biggest fan of uh, Jared's booking style. Uh, I think Dutch Mantel coming back might help the knockouts because he was part of the, um, the booking team back in the heyday, and I think he was one of the men chiefly responsible for booking them back when the booking of the knockouts was pretty damn good. So that's a positive. Uh, as for Jared, eh, time will tell. I, I look at this a little bit differently than you guys do, actually. You know, first of all, I don't think there's any savior. I don't think there's any such thing as a savior in wrestling. Uh, I would say, however, that, uh, you know, you talk about Rockstar Spud losing to a midget. You know, that smelled more like Vince Russo than anybody else to me. Um, what I will say, though, is that... <laughs> Jeff is reportedly an executive consultant. And my question is, what does that title mean? Does that mean that he is a consultant in an executive role like Eric Bischoff was? Which is, I think, how most people are taking this. Or is it the way I think is probably more likely? In which is, he is a consultant to the executive, meaning he's consulting to Ed Nordholm. You know, come back to it. Ed Nordholm is a an actual CEO, folks. And I know you guys have listened. I've said this a million times. If I was Dixie Carter, the first thing I would do would be hire a CEO and let that CEO hire a CFO. Well, guess what? They got a CEO now. And this is what CEOs do. They bring in consultants to consult with them and make them successful because they know they don't know everything and they don't need to know everything. All they have to be able to do is execute. And you do that by gathering data from as many sources as you can and getting data which is accurate. And you do that by bringing in consultants and bringing in subject matter experts. There's no doubt Jeff Jarrett is a subject matter expert. And he's also a TNA subject matter expert. So if that's the case, I see Jarrett as more a guy who is going to guide Ed Nordholm to the process to the point where Ed Nordholm feels comfortable and doesn't need Jeff anymore. And, you know... Dutch Mantel the same the same way. Jeff can't have eyes everywhere, so they bring Dutch in, and then Dutch reports back to Jarrett, reports back to Ed. is is kind of the way this would typically work. So to me, that's what I see going on. That's why Jeff won't be a part of the product or anything like that. He's simply there to help out. for for Jeff's for Jeff's time. I'm sure he's not only being compensated, but he's probably gonna probably gonna get some some chats in there about maybe actually finding a home for GFW. And maybe some perks there as well. So I'm looking forward to this. But I don't think that Jeff is suddenly going to run creative. I don't think Dutch is going to suddenly run creative. I do think that they'll have influence. Because that's what they're, they're due. They're, they're brought in to be influencers. Uh, the question is, anybody think that uh, Scott Demore might be possible? Raven? I mean, we've heard a lot of rumblings about would he be next. Well, I uh, kind of stole the thunder from you there. Because I was going to mention Scott Demore as well. Um, I hope to God. Because look, when... The, I think like 2017 is going to be the year again for the knockouts, to be honest with you. Uh, I think 2016 kind of planted the seed. I think this next year is going to be huge for the knockouts, and I'm excited as fuck about it. Um, D. Moore was awesome, and so so was, uh, good God, uh, Uncle Zeb, Dutch Mantel was for two. And look, the, the thing I want to go back to is FK9 really hit the nail on the head. And FK9's issues with Jarrett hogging the spotlight, being the champ when it should have been Christian, should have been AJ, should have been Joe, should have been Daniels, could have been a lot of guys back then, uh, Raven, 
a lot of guys. I absolutely 100% agree with FK9. Um, I think Jarrett realizes his time is past. The, the reason that I'm excited about Jarrett is that I strongly, strongly, strongly prefer the old TNA circa, two, uh, I'll say 2006 to 2009 were really the glory years for me. The wrestling was what f- the focus was on TNA. They had like the best roster I think I've ever seen. Jarrett was able to assemble that. He knows how to scout talent. He knows how to bring the right people in. And I think what's been missing the most in TNA has been the high quality matches. I think One Night Only Live was kind of really getting to that. Um, and it proved that this weekend. And from what we've heard about the spoilers, it really seems like the wrestling is going to kick some serious ass. Uh, and that's why I'm happy about Jarrett being back. I hope to God Scott Diamar comes back because, man, how great were the knockouts back in the heyday? How great was the X Division back in the heyday when Jarrett was there? I also was not a fan of Jarrett always being the champion. Drove me absolutely insane. But... I, this, I, I see the brightness in there. I don't think there's a savior by any means. I don't think TNA is ever going to get to the peak that they were. I think if they can wash the Dixie slate clean, let the right people be in charge, I think we may see some of those rowdy-ass TNA Impact Zone fans come back. I think we may see TNA improve, and that's what I'm excited about is because I want to see TNA great again. And I think TNA was great last year. Don't get me wrong, but like the wrestling... It just it wasn't always there because there wasn't enough time devoted to the wrestling and the shows. And I think that's what the big change is going to be. At least what I'm hoping for. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys got any other thoughts on that. FK9, you got anything else you want to add to it? If there were two guys responsible for like the original like, golden age of the knockouts, it was Dutch Mantel and Scott Demore. So I'm... Um, you know, Demore also great with the X Division. Like a lot of that stuff was credited with him for him as well. Uh, so I'm I'm crossing my fingers that they can get Demore back. I'm I'm crossing my toes. I'm crossing every body body part I have. That might be a bit too much information, there, buddy. <laughs> I, I'm crossing my decrepit erection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here come the dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Brother in the score, any, uh, anything you want to add? Scott do more knockouts, wrestling quality, anything like that? My uh, brother underscore. I, I think this is stuff that we're all looking forward to. I, mean, I think we're all looking forward to, to great wrestling. And I think the wrestling product last year was fantastic. I really do. I think if they need to build on what they did, I think they need to not restart from scratch. That would be the big thing. I mean, if they can bring in folks who are going to help out, that's great. But let's not, let's not restart. I'm tired of restarting. I, I've said that many times before. Every time somebody new comes in, they just throw everybody else's stuff away. You know, and having having actually read the um, the spoilers, you know, there are some things that uh, they did in the past that are actually coming back now. So that's kind of good that maybe Anthem is actually paying attention to what worked and going that direction. So uh, excited to, excited for the future. I don't know that this is going to be as big a deal as some people are leading it off to believe, though. On the other hand, yeah. you know, Swoggle's part of TNA now. Delete. <laughs> Delete. 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 Obsolete. Obsolete. Oh, man, you prejudice Fuck fucks. He's, he, you prejudice fucks. You're only saying that because he's short. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Oops. Hey. Oops. My bad. Um, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> hey, we... I know we're going to talk about who we've lost, you know, and uh, there. So, like, just the the rumor is out that uh, Mike and Maria don't have contracts. They're PPA. Uh, Mike's done some jobs. Maria, like, God, why is Hornswoggle signed? But we don't know if Mike and Maria are getting re-signed. That's all I have to say. Hornswoggle, Swoggle, whatever. I mean, dude, are they are they gonna like? What does he contribute? Are, are we gonna go fucking asylum years, and we're gonna catch this guy beaten off in a fucking trash can at some point? What does he bring to TNA? And I'm not like I understand he's 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 a little person, all that. I'm not I'm not knocking him. That's something he was born with. What does he contribute or bring into Impact Wrestling? I seriously want to know why this guy was signed. Hornswoggle, while they can make light, and it was actually funny having Broken Matt talk to him about being Meek Mahan's son or whatever with that terrible angle that shouldn't have went to Mr. Anderson, but it didn't. It went to that guy. Um, he brings nothing to the table. He really doesn't. 
uh, at least he's like talking normal, not being like some lunatic leprechaun. But this is a, a stupid fucking signing. It, it's it's a waste of money. It's going to contribute nothing. Poor Rockstar Spud. Um, brother underscore your thoughts. If they let Mike Bennett leave TNA, that will be the biggest, most egregious error that they have made in a very, 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 very long time. My only hope is that Mike's uh, attention to his Twitter account would turn WWE off. Now, I would never wish anything bad on Mike Bennett. I love Mike Bennett, but that's a selfish side of me that just wants to keep him in TNA. Mike, I love you, brother. I really do. Um... I what a what a colossal screw up if they don't if they don't get that guy resigned and committed. What a colossal screw up. And if WWE were smart, if they had any brains at all, and Mike Bennett is working on a paper appearance contract, they would sign his ass to their active roster for Raw immediately. The guy is is the bomb. So then there's that too. So I guess you can look at it as. Why would WWE not just jump on Mike Bennett? You know, they they got managers competing in the UK. You mean to tell me that Mike Bennett can't make a difference for him too? Give me a break. Uh, total difference maker. Swoggle, normally, guys, I got to admit, I do generally tend to like some of the silliness on the show. I don't like it to take up the whole show. I like a silly segment every now and again. But I think they got enough. I think they got enough comedy characters right now. I don't think they need to have you know the midget wrestler join them. And I'll be honest with you, I don't like watching midget wrestlers on a regular wrestling program. I think that all it does is put them down. I love watching, you know, the Hulk Hogan midget wrestling show because I think that midget wrestlers against midget wrestlers are are, are kind of cool. But I don't like anything that just puts people down for the sake of putting people down. And I'll be honest with you, when you see Swoggle out there, they're laughing at him more than they're laughing with him. And I guess he looks at it as a paycheck, and he's interested in doing it. But to me, it just doesn't work for me. You know what I mean? I, I want to laugh with you. I don't want to laugh at you. Concur. So there you have it, Raven Effect. <laughs> Sums that up, huh? There you go. Uh, so Hornswoggle made his return. On a more positive note, so did my man Davey Richards. Uh, Davey back from injury. Uh, you know, when he came out on the live impact, he kind of looked like he was a little wobbly, uh, like maybe his leg. Him and Lashley tore that shit up at one night only. And uh, Davey looks like he is back, ready to go, full strength. And uh, I'm just happy to see him back. Wolves Nation, uh, the Wolves are back. The world champ is back uh, with his tag team partner just returned um fk9 your thoughts on davy richards's return his final year that is yeah um I, i'm really happy to see him back uh, i have uh, issues with I, I have a little bit of an issue with the way they brought him back we'll get into that when we talk about the show but it's it, it's it's great davy was sorely missed i think the only downside is that he was actually cleared like two months ago but because of the taping schedule they couldn't bring him back until now yeah, he actually got cleared to wrestle back in November. Yeah, but we're not seeing him until January. That uh, this, this is the downside of taping so much TV so far in advance. But it's it, it's great to see him back. It's one more name to you know beef up the roster. I'm I'm hoping to see another you know one more run as a tag team by the Wolves, and I'm I'm hoping to see Davey get uh, a possible run at the World Heavyweight Championship, uh, possibly at Destination X or. I don't know, maybe if that rumored heel turn happens, they'll see him feuding with Eddie pretty soon. Who knows? I'm just just glad to see the guy back. Davey Richards, welcome back, brother. Welcome back to TNA Wrestling. We missed you, we love you, and we're excited as all hell to have you back, my friend. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm excited for him to be back, guys. Here's a guy that gives you 150% every time out. How does that not just make you smile? You know he's 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 five foot eight inches tall, and he goes like he's six foot eight inches tall. You know what I mean? He he's 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 a mean mean guy, and he's a wrestling machine. You know you want to talk about greatest technical wrestlers in the world today? You know David Richards gonna be at the top of my list right there. The only thing I'll say about him being ready in November and him waiting until now, I think that's a good thing. 
and the injury that he had as a wrestler, you can kind of control what your body does and what directions that you go in. And the real key is just how you plan on it. So he probably was just fine to wrestle a couple months ago, but give it a little bit longer. It, it does take a year to heal. The healing process does take that long, and he's just shy of a year. And given the fact that he can control how he lands, he can give us those five-star matches now that he might only have been able to give a four-star match a couple a couple months ago. So I'm kind of glad that they waited on it for that reason. But uh, but 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 Davey, congratulations, welcome back. I, I just I just hope that this isn't this is not your last year. I hope that if this is your last year, you achieve everything that you wanted to achieve. Uh, but 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 welcome back. Uh, and and thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, and now, you know, Hurls and myself, we kind of touched on this last week, and I kind of gave my thoughts, but uh, there's rumors that both Billy Corgan and Dave Lagana are meeting with Ring of Honor. I'll say I watched Ring of Honor for the first time in weeks uh, this past weekend, and Jesus Christ, do they need something. Uh, it, it just the show isn't improving, in my opinion. Uh, Brother underscore thoughts on this because my thoughts are kind of summed up already you know when i look at this i look at billy corgan as as a self-made guy that doesn't need to take a job with a podunk wrestling company and that you know he always had an ulterior motive when he was a tna that he wanted to own it one day and you know you, you follow the lawsuit and didn't take a salary for a year and he tried to buy the company i mean why would you do that for a year and not take a salary, right? If he didn't want to own the company. And I look at ROHs, they're owned by Sinclair, and, you know, I don't know why Sinclair would want to get rid of them. They're a nice little flagship for their product, for their uh, station. They don't cost a whole lot of money. They keep their costs down. And uh, it just doesn't seem like a good fit for for Billy and Dave. So I'm a little bit miffed by that. I don't quite understand where they're going with it unless they're just meeting with them and trying to figure things out, maybe do a partnership because Billy's, you know, might be going off and doing his own thing. I think it's a pipe dream to think that they would actually join ROH because God knows the creative side of that product needs it. I haven't seen a worse book product in Oh my God! Years. Uh, it's probably worse than it was at the end of Nitro, and that was just really difficult to watch because I was a big Nitro fan. Um, I'm a big ROH fan too. I just think it's just horribly booked. So it's a bit of a pipe dream for me to see those guys come running in. Uh, potentially, maybe Dave Lagana, but I'd be perfectly happy if they did. I, I just, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm leery of this guys. Yeah, pipe dream sums it up really well. Um, a lot's been said over the years about TNA constantly changing directions every time somebody new comes in, like a Hulk Hogan or a, or a, or a John Gaburik or whoever. That you know, every time it happens, we see like a big format change or uh, just a change in direction in general with the way they book or the way they present certain things. And I think one of the big complaints is that there was no real set vision that they adhered to all the time. And I think a a problem with ROH is that they're kind of at the other end of the spectrum where they're so set in their ways, so set in, you know, this, this format that they've chosen to present wrestling with that they become really resistant to any kind of change whatsoever. And then here you've got a guy like Billy Corgan, who, as we saw in TNA, he's got a lot of really different outside the box ideas. He's not in the wrestling bubble so he doesn't think the way you know, your your you know career wrestling bookers tend to think. He's gonna he's he's gonna want to do a lot of crazy different things that a lot of the ROH faithful faithful are probably not going to be on board with. And then there's Dave Lagana, who you know one of his uh, big things as uh, a wrestling booker create appreciate. Which is really not ROH's wheelhouse at all. You know, ROH is just, just into straight up wrestling, just bare bones with little to no character. In fact, if they have any uh, talents that actually have character, usually their MO is to suck all the character and personality out of those people. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, Pipe Dream is right. I I don't see any kind of relation working relationship uh, working out there, and I'll, I'll be frankly, I'll be stunned if it happens.
Over to you, Raven. <laughs> Raven, it's halftime, buddy. Did we lose Raven again? I think we lost him again. He says, shit, I'm tyking. At least that's what he put in the chat window. <laughs> Do whatever you did the last time. I just did. Oh, you're kind of back. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. I'm tyking it up. Um, basically, I can't it, even... count, the, count the three and then do it. So I can edit it out. Basically, what I was trying to say was that like, as much as I loved Billy and wanted him to get the company, if those last tapings in December were anything of Billy's vision, I'm fucking glad he's going to go fuck ROH up and not TNA anymore. Cause just the last tapings, I just wasn't having it. And I'm sure there was more to it, like a hurricane and all the crossover and stuff. But I mean, stuff like what, what was that stupid X division capture the flag <laughs> thing that they had going on? Like, I can't wait to see Billy's version of what hide and go seek would have been on ROH. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know, Billy. I love you. I wish you the best. Um, I hate you for leaving because now DK doesn't come out to my man Manson. Uh, I don't know what Rockstar Spud came out with, but I'm sure it wasn't Smashing Pumpkins a zero. But uh, yeah, R O H R O H. They have like this terrible Dungeon of Doom looking thing that they're trying to do with Kevin Sullivan and BJ Whitmer, and BJ Whitmer just looks like a goon. And I don't know who this generic fuck is with them, but really like. What was that guy's name? Julio De Niro, the guy that like Lita first came out with. Like that's kind of what the dude looks like, and it's just it's just it's, plain bad. Ring of Honor. Is that that Punisher guy? Martinez. I think it might Punisher yeah. Martinez. Punisher Martinez. Punisher Martinez. That's a fucking name. Let me tell you, the the creative genius between Punisher Martinez. If it, that doesn't scream indie darling, Ring of Honor, just and, and I I don't want to sound negative because I do root for ring of honor they have kaz and daniels i love some adam cole and all that but like my god you know Just i think stupid i think punisher martinez is on the uh maryland championship wrestling um a show that's going to be run by the hardys the broken hardys i think he's actually on that show with the hardys so there you go you got published punisher martinez with uh yeah i think that's him punisher martinez with the broken anniversary show there's your connection. There we go. You know, and uh, it's weird because I, as I watched that show of Ring of Honor that came on Saturday night, uh, they they showed the Matt Hardy video. And this is the first time I had seen a, a Matt Hardy invading. And, like, the crowd, the, the crowd that frequently chants, fuck TNA, was delete, 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 and pop like hell when Matt Hardy came on. And, uh, you know, the the... The beauty of this, my, my fear is that the uh, Hardys end up in Ring of Honor because, you know, those, those contracts are expiring. But apparently, according to David Meltzer, uh, one place he won't go is to is to end up back with Mr. Meek Mahan because, uh, you know, like everything, Vince needs his shitty writers to tell everyone what to say on TV. And Matt Hardy's not down with that because he has a bigger picture and frankly doesn't want Vince and the WWE shitty writers butchering his his genius that he's doing this broken brilliance i couldn't be happier fk9 could you be any happier uh no uh, this is this is one uh, I, I don't know if this is a rumor or speculation or what but i believe it in matt's case because uh matt's, matt's got a lot of creative freedom he's doing his own thing it's working great for him and this is one thing that he would just not be able to do in wwe because he'd have a bunch of shitty writers feeding him a lot of stilted, unnatural, wooden dialogue that he that would make him look like the worst actor in the world, just like 99% of the other people on that show. And um, Jeff, I could see possibly going back because he seems like he's getting kind of close to hanging it up. He said he wants to have his last match with The Undertaker at, at WrestleMania and you know, jump off a Hell in a Cell cage or something. That sounds like the kind of thing that you, you know, Jeff's into, but I think Matt... At this stage in his career, he's more concerned with just having the creative freedom to do what he wants to do. So I think Matt would be likely to to stay in TNA. Jeff, I don't know about him, but I, I think I, I think Matt staying with TNA is a pretty safe bet. So I'm the Hardys. I made plenty of money. I'm set. I'm well invested. Apparently, their father makes sure that they're very well invested, which is wonderful. 
And I got two options. I can go to WWE and I and I can work at the the corporation from hell where they treat you like crap. Or I could work four sets of tapings a year, guys. Four sets of taping. I could still make a hell of a good living and I can have creative control over everything. And then when I'm not there, if I want to work other events, I can or I can just stay home with my kids. Which are you going to choose? It is a no-brainer. I know they're saying that Meek Mahan has no interest in the Hardys. That's what Meltzer's saying. And, and that's fine, but I don't even understand why Jeff would be ready to go back. I understand Jeff going back at the very end, but he's not ready to hang it up yet. Not not the, with the work that they're doing, the amount of fun that they're, happening, they're having. So th- this, to me, is a no-brainer. And, yes, it's absolutely great for TNA. Sorry, Numero. We love you, buddy. we got to get him back on, by the way. I know that he does not care for the Broken Hardys, but this is a wonderful thing for TNA, and it just makes sense. You know, the thing is, they can always go back there if they want to. It's not... If if they're going to try and say Vince doesn't fucking want them back, he's full of shit. When this thing runs its course, they would take him back in a heartbeat, but they, he, Vince wants his own imprint on this Broken Hardy stuff so he could butcher it and ruin it. They'll come back. Like, they don't want to go out there and fucking put over a bunch of shit tag teams that WWE tries to say is good. Uh, you know, I know they mentioned the day of new, and I'm sure they probably want to have a match with them. Um, but look what they did to the Dudleys. Look what they've done to uh, the club. It, it's stupid. You know, they probably don't want to go back there. And I'm sure Jeff can go back there and make a living if he wants. Um, I hope they don't lose him. But, dude, Matt is the star now. Like, Matt is no longer in his shadow. Matt is Matt – is, Matt Hardy is the fucking man. All three of us last year were so down on that guy. And now all three of us are like, Matt Hardy is the man. Because, frankly, Matt Hardy is a man, and he deserves it. Maxwell is a king. Rebecca is a queen. And uh, you know what? Matt Hardy can go back to 217 and do this all over again. And uh, I think the Hardys are probably having the best time of their career. And I think they're having a lot of fun. And you know what is, like, the, be- the best theme song in all of wrestling is Rebe-, Rebe out there playing that piano. Dude, that <laughs> shit gives me chills, man. That shit is legit. I like Moose's theme. But I'll it's tell you this much. genius. <clears throat> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this much, Raven Effect. You know, we did challenge Matt Hardy. He needed. We told him he needed to change things up. And my God, did he meet that challenge? We told him he was the worst thing on our television set, and he needed to go back to the mid card. And now he's the biggest thing in professional wrestling. And you know what? Congrats to him. I love it when people do that to me. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. It's a very, very, very good thing. Yeah, he sure answered that challenge from us that he probably didn't hear or give a shit about. But thanks, Matt. Hey, I'm are, gonna ask you, Raven, are you suggesting that Matt Hardy doesn't listen to the show? I uh, I don't think he's one of our like 200 listeners on a good week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask him next time I see him. All right. Although with that uh, with that heel cast sign, uh, Alabama's holding up a championship belt. Fuck Alabama. With that, uh, <laughs> with that, with that heel cast sign that we got, with uh, Chef coming on board, with FK9 on board. I mean, we're we're bound to hit 250, 300 at some point. The heel cast is growing, motherfuckers. Just wait. But, uh, <laughs> look, look, Raven Effect. I will be. I will actually be at that at MCW show with Matt Hardy. I'm gonna try to pull him on the side. I'm gonna try to be like, look, look, look. I know you did this all because Raven Effect and the the heel caster formerly known as TNA dude told you to do this and we're going to take all the credit for it i learned not to fuck with matt hardy on twitter that's all i know i'm not going to fuck with him on twitter i'm not going to fuck with him at all man that, that, that's i would what never fuck in. with that guy again like if i saw that guy I would, I would fucking kiss his ass so hard and shake his hand and just be in be in awe of the guy because uh that's how awesome i think he is you probably french but, kiss uh, his ass as far as what you do let's take a tongue and some broken butthole <laughs> <laughs> Speaking, you know, everybody yeah. knows the heel cast is all about dick jokes, but I'm not going there right now. <laughs> going butthole jokes now. <laughs> we're, we're Broken butthole. butthole jokes. Broken butthole Ten, tends to happen when you got a decrepit erection in there. But uh, <laughs> speaking of broken, uh, Mark Andrews' uh, TNA status is broken, over with, deleted, obsolete. The dude is now in the WWE UK tournament. Uh, coincidentally, right after TNA decided to fucking do something with him in December, you know, because uh, Jesus Christ, I don't know. They only had him for years and everyone wanted to see him. Uh, it sucks. A big old fat dick joke all the way around. Uh, brother underscore your thoughts on Mr. Mark Andrews. 
Don't sadly, it, sadly, it's not much of a loss because they didn't use him. Guy's incredibly talented. I wish him all the best, but I don't blame him for, for leaving. He's capable of, of going to the moon and back. He's got charisma. He's, he's you know, a good-looking young kid that really can go in the ring. Um, I don't know what they were thinking. But congratulations to you, to you, managers. And because they weren't using you, I'm not deleting you off my playlist. I'm going to keep it because this is on TNA, not you, my friend. Man, this sucks. And Mark Andrews was you know, a contender for perhaps most underutilized guy on the roster for quite a while. A winner of British Boot Camp 2. Um, just just had all the potential in the world. And if you see this guy, like some of the videos he posts on social media, you, you saw how talented he was. Sadly, you didn't really get uh, a, a really good picture of it on TV because they barely used him for a long time. But the moment they finally start realizing the guy's potential, the moment they finally start doing stuff with him, the moment he starts getting over, despite the fact that they barely used him for a long time, he finally just gets fed up and, and, and leaves. And, yeah, I don't, I don't blame him either. Uh, just, oh, God, it, it just it, it bugs the hell out of me that they had him for, like, what, two years? And they only started to really u- utilize him at the tail end of his run back when he was uh, getting ready to, to jump ship? Son of a bitch. That's frustrating. Agreed. Um, you know, we've been... At least I have, and I know some other people on here have been screaming for the guy to get used a lot. Uh, and they didn't do much with the guy. And every time the guy got on TV, he was impressive. Every single time he got on TV, he impressed. Even when they gave him the skateboard and made him Bart Simpson, it was stupid, but it worked. And we saw him and DJ's. Did him and DJ's even have, like, the one-on-one match for the X Division title? Like, I, I don't think it happened, did it? I don't think so. They had that triple threat on Impact. That's about it. Yeah, nah, with Brack, he, he, never hey, he sure added a lot to that X Division match, let me tell you. Um, just sucks, man. Sucks bad. I bet she's going to go sell more records with his band because he's going to get the WWE exp- exposure, even though it's like only on the network just for the UK stuff. Uh, you know, and Nigel's there commentating or whatever the hell he's doing. Um, it, it's stupid. It, it sucks that they lost Mark Andrews. It sucks that Mark Andrews is gone. Uh, you know, they've let a lot of talent go. All we've gotten so far is Hornswoggle that we're aware of. Maybe some surprises, maybe not. Who knows? We don't do spoilers. We don't talk about it. But, um, you know, to, to lose the people that we've lost, and, you know, Tigre Uno's gone. Tribunal's gone. We need tag teams. Mandrews is gone. Um, Raquel is gone, who we're going to get into a little bit later. Uh, all that's gone, and all we've gotten is Hornswoggle so far. And, you know, Mike and Maria might be on the way out. And losing Mike and Maria is devastating. They've got to keep them. They've got to keep some of these top-notch talents around. Uh, and who knows about Spud, too, right? Um, you know, because uh, we'll, we'll discuss that later as well. But it sucks. Uh, I, I, Fuck. Mark Andrews, I wish you the best, uh, I guess. I hope the company you work for fails, goes under, catches on fire, dies in agony. But uh, good luck to you, pal. You're a good old chap. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, I see here on the agenda that Kyle O'Reilly, the former Ring of Honor world champion, apparently just lost it back to Adam Cole, baby. And uh, Adam Hangman put me to sleep, Page, or free agents. Uh, TNA can't even afford uh, Mark Andrews, so I'm not sure why we're talking about this, but Brother Underscore, you put it on here. Your thoughts on these two? Wow. Um, I don't have much thoughts on Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, not much of a fan of the guy. Don't know why people like him so much. Uh, he puts me to sleep. I actually think that uh, Adam Hangman Page has some potential. I really do. I think he could be a decent exhibition guy. I think he'd be a decent character guy. I don't think he's had an opportunity to show much in Ring of Honor. But then again, do you can say that for a lot of people. Kyle O'Reilly, on the other hand, I, I don't understand why he's popular at all. So um, uh, good, good, good luck to him. Right? Wouldn't mind having Hangman Page for the exhibition. Well, I am really the wrong person to comment on ROH talent, so I'm going to have to take your word for that. Uh, <laughs> any, 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 I, I've tried to get into Ring of Honor a number of times over the years, and every time I just can't stick with it. Uh, so I'm really not that familiar with either of these guys. Um, I will say that I, I like TNA to make use of the people they have already have signed before they try to uh, bring in more people, like... 
where's Caleb Conley? Put Caleb Conley on the damn show before you break, try to bring in Kyle O'Reilly or Hangman Page or whoever. Um, could they use another X Division guy? I, I, I guess, yeah, they're they're down one because they got Caleb Conley there. But I, are, are they any good? I, I don't really know. I'll, I'll I'll take your word for that one, uh, brother underscore. I've never really liked Adam Page. I've I've just never got it. Um, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish together. Uh, Red Dragon is a great tag team. Them solo, I do not get the fucking hype at all. Like people talk like Bobby Fish is the goddamn next Hulk Hogan or some shit like that, or Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels or woo. Don't need him back on the show. But like, I don't get it with either of them. Kyle O'Reilly, I think is boring. He's his look is bland. Everything about the guy is bland. I it's just, it's just, dude. If we have the money, TNA is not going to get it. like TNA right now. They're in such a bind. They're in such a, a question mark. I just don't see them getting him. Um, but like Kyle O'Reilly is not going to boost any ratings at all. The dude just doesn't has have charisma. He's a good technical wrestler, and that's what ROH wants. He's not going to put one single ass in a seat unless it's his mom or dad's. Uh, maybe if he has a girlfriend, like that's it. Um, and he's he's going to go to NXT. Or he's going to resign with ROH and New Japan because like fuck, I don't know. That's the thing. Our, like that's the ROH type, or like he can go wrestle some five foot eight midgets and fucking japan and everyone oh it's a five-star match like i don't care um but uh a guy who would possibly bring some asses in the seats is alberto el patron there's rumors tna has been discussions with alberto el patron aka alberto del rio aka that guy in cell number 17-9 <laughs> block a76 uh and his girlfriend's with him uh, brother underscore your thoughts on Alberto Del Rio. I wish I, I like this fucking ring announcer better than him in WWE. By the way, I, I think know. most people did. So, sounds like he's got a lot of baggage that comes along with him, and I don't know. I, I don't think you bring in somebody unless you know how you're going to use them. And I don't know that they need this guy at the top of the card, and I don't know that he wants to come in anywhere but the top of the card. You know, he did a short sit in ROH, then he went back to WWE, right? And then he got booted from there again. Uh, he's done some things in Mexico. I, I don't, I don't know that I really care. Like, you know, so what the heck? Why don't you just use the people you've already got? And I think FK9 said that pretty well before. Does Del Rio have a bit of a name? I guess. Does he have a fan following? Maybe, maybe in Mexico. I, I don't feel like he ever really caught on in WWE. Um, course that's probably enough for tna to want to bring him in uh but everything i've heard about the guy suggests that he's a complete headache to deal with so i'd i prefer just not have the headache how about you take the money that you're offering del rio and you throw it at mike bennett and convince him to stay god forbid they do something intelligent right yeah that would sure have me believing in miracles yes we do uh I hated Del Rio in WWE. I thought the guy sucked. I literally thought when he was in WWE the first time, I, the first time around, I thought he literally would just like take Ted DiBiase, JBL, Carlito, and Razor Ramon, rip them off, and we'll go out there and make a champ. I thought the guy sucked. When I saw him in Lucha and Ring of Honor as Alberto El Patron after all that, the guy impressed the hell out of me. Um, but since then, he uh, went back to the WWE, which he claimed he left because they were racist. Obviously not enough, uh, you know, the color that prevailed there was green, not any uh, brown, white, whatever. Um, and then since then, like the dude can't fucking go anywhere without getting stabbed, stabbing someone or getting arrested or getting in a fist fight. I'm sorry. I've had my own issues. Uh, nothing to that extreme, but it screams substance problem, some sort of mental head case. And it, it sounds like he's taken uh, whatever. I don't know what the girl's name is. Uh, Paige or something, his girlfriend with him. Um, no, I do not want this guy around. The dude is a cancer. If he wants to get himself cleaned up or taken care of, then fine. But this dude's obviously got some issues. He can't go anywhere without getting in a fight or arrested. You don't need that kind of cancer in a locker room. It doesn't matter if it's pro wrestling. It doesn't matter if it's in mixed martial arts. It doesn't matter if it's in the NFL, MLB, NBA. You don't bring cancers into your locker room, and that's clearly what the guy is. I do not want to see him coming to TNA without getting his shit together. And um, 
You know, uh, Alberto El Patron, you know, that that apparently, I guess, El Patron means the boss. Uh, something that Dave Lagana said he left TNA because he didn't know who his was anymore. Uh, Dude, your segues are on point this week. I know. I'm just bringing that fucking fire. Uh, <laughs> FK9, you got, any, you got anything on uh, Lagana not knowing who his boss is? Yeah, you know, it, it reminds me of something Billy Corgan said in an interview, like, uh, you know, last year at some point, a couple of months ago. I forget when it was. I think it was uh, an interview he did with Vince Russo, where he said that one of the things that he was trying to do as president was you know, trying to um, clarify who reports to who, because there was a there there was a lot of confusion there, and apparently there has been for a long time. I've heard reports, you know, from time to time about how people don't really know who they're working for or who they're working under or whatever. And that was one of the things that he was trying to to simplify and and clear up so everyone would know who they're reporting to and what department they're working in and, and whatever. Uh, so if uh, Lagana said he didn't know who his boss was, yeah, I, I, I believe him. Because um, that's something that Dixie never really felt the need to iron out apparently there's there's always been some confusion there i remember a report that said that hogan was complaining about that too like back when he was there a couple of years ago um so yeah I, I can see why maybe he felt like the writing was on the wall or maybe he just didn't want to deal with the headache of not knowing who he has to take orders from or who he gets his marching orders from or whatever so yeah i, I can understand him wanting to move on if that was the case seems reasonable to me too you know, people people want to know who their boss is because without that simple knowledge, where's the stability? I can't succeed if I don't know who to report to because I don't know what you're asking of me. What am I supposed to do? There has to be somebody to tell you that. And the only way to not have a boss is to be the boss and be in charge of the company. And he clearly wasn't that. So how is he supposed to operate? How is he supposed to be successful? At the end of the day... People just want to be successful, and you can't be successful if you don't know what you're doing. So I don't, I don't blame him, and I think it's, I think it's sad, but I think it's part of the transition uh, to Anthem. So wish Dave Lagana the best. I think it's, a, it's a terrible loss for TNA. I really do. I mean, this guy was a cornerstone, a rock of the company that was always there, day in and day out, working hard and doing the right thing. But at the end of the day, guys, the right thing for him was to be somewhere where he can be successful. And I hope he finds that. Yep, I believe him. Uh, now, uh, apparently, Ali has launched a new YouTube page. And um, don't know much about it, but I do know this. As long as Braxton Sutter is all on that page, count me in as a subscriber. Your thoughts, Brother Underscore? My thoughts are that uh, you know you want to you want to break his backside like you want to break Matt Hardy's backside. I don't know. Apparently, you got a thing for Braxton Sutter now. Uh, I think it's cool that uh, that, that Allie has a, a YouTube page. I think she, she's all in, and that's what I love about the girl. Everybody loves it about the girl. She is all in, and it shows. It shows the amount of fun she's having. It shows the character work that she's doing. Um, the progression, that storyline is, is really one of my favorite storylines, not just of 2016, but, but really of, 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 of any time. Because they progress it slowly, but it's been intriguing the entire time. It's been very interesting the entire time. Give, give Maria lots of props to it. It wasn't all Allie, but they've, they've, they've taken it, and you can actually see her growing right before your very eyes. And again, give give Ali lots of credit for developing the character and getting just a little bit better every time and showing just something new uh, all, all the while with the with the character so uh, I'm, I'm very happy for it. it's it's great to see somebody go in it's great to see them not just be all in but be successful as well fk9 you got any thoughts on uh Ali's youtube page oh yeah sorry i had the mic muted uh as I was saying, I don't know why having a YouTube page isn't mandatory for any on-screen talent in this business because it's such a useful way um, to to interact with people, to connect with people, and also to just get your yourself over, get your personality out there. And, if, hey, if you're not being used the way you think you should be used, you can use this as a platform to show, hey, this is my personality, this is my character, this is what I'm about. It's just a useful tool for stuff like that. 
I, I remember um, Eli Drake got himself uh, noticed uh, by cutting some YouTube promos, and what we saw his real personality for the first time back early in his run. And um, you know, if, you, if you do a search for Allie TNA, it comes right up. I subscribed to her a little while ago. Uh, she's got three videos up there, mainly talking about um, you know training and you know, what kind of protein she uses and what you know like what what her day is like when she's traveling to the show and, you know, and stuff like that. And, and uh, Raven, you'll be happy to know that Braxton Sutter does make an appearance. So go jump on that. Um, yeah, so it's it's pretty new, but she's you know she's. For three videos, she's got a fair amount of views already. So, uh, so yeah, go go hit her up, Allie TNA. Just do a search; it comes right up. And um, yeah, good for her at taking the bull by the horns because I think this is something that that every talent should be doing. Do it for Braxton Sutter, Dixie. Do it for Braxton Sutter. Damn right. <laughs> and uh, uh, FK9 dropped my favorite line ever on the show. Uh, and I, I use it every time I get the chance. Um, especially speaking of something I would use every time I ever got a chance, Raquel also gone from TNA. Uh, crickets for a reason. Uh, FK9, <laughs> you're a knockout guy. Uh, any thoughts on this? Um, freeze up some money that would be better spent somewhere else. Look. <laughs> Look, there there isn't a whole lot to say about Raquel. They, they they signed her off of a reality show with zero experience, and it showed. I I don't know what they were expecting. Um, she was she was making progress as a wrestler, but she was still green as hell. She botched pretty regularly. She couldn't cut a promo to save her life. She wasn't TV ready, and she wasn't going to be TV ready anytime soon. You know, they re-gimmicked her several times over just one year. Starts her out, starts off with this pleasure and pain thing with Lashley that got killed as soon as it began. Then she shows up with the bromance, and it was terrible. And then she's doing this, like, narcissistic Kim Kardashian thing on Explosion, and that went nowhere. She couldn't get over. She didn't look like she had any idea what she was doing when it came to ring psychology and working a crowd. And it, it just, she just seemed like a big waste of money to me, so... If they're just cutting their losses and getting rid of her and maybe putting that money to better use, good for them. Wow. Y'all spent a lot of time on that one. Um, she didn't do anything <laughs> while she was there, and she managed to flip in Burman. So I look at it this way. If dropping her is just a setup to dropping Robbie E., I'm good with it. But then whose face would adorn my hot-selling brand of toilet paper? Swoggle. I don't know. I got to unload that toilet paper somehow, brother underscore. I was, I was, I was going with Hillary Clinton. That's a very popular item on Amazon right now. They got Hillary toilet paper. Oh yeah, yeah. We had did one of those uh, gift things where everybody like stole gifts from each other, and somebody managed to get the Hillary toilet paper. Apparently, nice. it was it was sold out. Like like you had to get it earlier, and you couldn't get it until like the middle of January or something like that. Yeah, it works for everybody because either you you spawn when you look at it or you wipe your backside with it. But it's it's very popular. Now I can tell you what, dudes aren't going to be jerking off into that. Uh, anyways, <laughs> all right then. <laughs> uh, wasn't Raquel like? Wasn't there a rumor she like was a call girl or an escort or some shit in Brazil? But um, <sighs> man, I just I, I, she's just not as hot as Hillary is. But um, like. Uh, from what I heard, like, from everyone that saw her matches in her training, like, I heard good things about Raquel, so, like, I'm a, I'm a little confused, but then it seems like they're kind of, like, cutting ties with their international uh, wrestlers in a lot of ways, which makes complete sense, because Lord knows TNA has no international presence. Get a fucking grip on it. That's, like, uh, they do better overseas than they do here, but um, good luck to Raquel. Uh I hope she's not a call girl, but if she is, uh, I'll get your number. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you best of luck. Adios. Um, so let's move on to Impact because for some reason we actually had news in TNA, and uh, you know for time constraints, I'm just going to sum this one up. The we get a match at the start between Eddie Edwards, EC3, and Lashley. Uh, we get the Ethan Anthem, the third thing. Eddie says he's got a surprise. I don't think anyone was shocked to see it was Davey Richards, uh, but we ended up getting the match set up. Three-way match, Eddie versus Lashley versus EC3. Um, 
then we move on to the grand championship match. We had Moose against Mike Bennett, and I'm going to say right now, before I kick it over to one of you guys, I was so goddamn impressed with this match. It is the only grand championship match that has really been truly great, in my opinion. Uh, FK9, what were your thoughts on the match? I echo that sentiment 100%. I think this was probably the best match they've had since they started this three-round format thing. I think this was the first one that really showed how you can take, um, you know, the, the rounds and the point systems and the judges and make it all work for you. I think it, it took them a long time with this, and you could tell that they were trying, they were just still trying to finesse it and trying to figure out how to make it work as they went along. Never really figured it out. This is how you do it. The point system mattered. The judges' decisions mattered, and it all felt. It came like right down to the wire. It actually made for a really exciting third round and a really exciting finish. And those those guys wrestled the hell out of that too. That was a that was just a great match all around. And I um if if we were getting more stuff like that, then I would be a lot more into this whole three round point system thing. Um, you know, as it is, I could take or leave it. But dude, dude, give us more stuff like that. And hell, while you're at it, give us more Mike Bennett Moose matches too. Tell me about it, guys. Y'all stole my thunder big time on this one. Uh, I got to tell you that I was watching this match, and when it came on, I was just like, you know, oh, great. They're still using these damn grand championship rules. I can't stand this. This is just boring. But I kind of started watching it because it was Mike Bennett and Moose. And I um, started thinking, man, this is this is a great match. This is an actual, actually an interesting match. This is how this match is supposed to be done, and and I, I'm still I'm still not sold on it, guys, because I just don't think that they can keep these kind of matches week in and week out. And when you only do one a week, it just doesn't really fit the rest of the program anyway. But but tag on, this was this was a heck of a good match. Would think that they would need to 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 switch it up a little bit. I don't think that we should know who wins the rounds as you go. Uh, I don't. I just. I just don't understand that one, and it doesn't work for me. Uh, there needs to be some intrigue at the end as to what's going to happen, and we all know that they're going to say, "Oh, well, this one won round one, this one won round two. Yeah, just just make it. You know, save it for the end and save the suspense so both guys will go at it hard. But, 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 tag on. This was a damn good match. So much like you guys, I was hoping that this rule was going to be dropped, uh, and I expected it to be dropped. I was disappointed at the time. Um, this match was great and i'm gonna be i'm gonna say this right now so last year we watched lashley and galloway and those two had this this chemistry this connection that was out of control and i think that moose and mike bennett are really i'm not saying that what they do is is what lashley and galloway can do because i think lashley and galloway are both overall better wrestlers than those two these two from this match and uh, we're, we're not discussing one night only live but that match between those two at one night only live the following night is match of the year contender already. That match was fucking great. And they, they tore the place down the following night and they tore it up last night. These two have such an incredible, incredible chemistry. And to all the people out there <clears throat> last year that said Moose was raw, Moose sucked, Moose didn't contribute anything, TNA shouldn't sign Moose, Brother Underscore and myself were on this show making pitches for Moose. And I just want to say to everyone, I told you so. Moose is the man. Moose is doing moonsaults and shit like that off the off the middle rope. These guys are so damn good. The chemistry was there. It just it give me more Moose and Mike Bennett. The the only thing like I'm kind of disappointed in is that I want to see Bennett stay. And I was just hoping Bennett was going to get the belt. Uh, Mike Bennett for world champion 2017, along with James Storm, Davy Richards, and EC3. Um, excellent, excellent stuff. Keep it up. Grand championship. It looked good. Moose, Bennett, stars. And uh, speaking of stars, a guy who I think is a legitimate star, one of the best acts consistently on TNA Impact Wrestling for years and just the best acts in the company. Rockstar Spud got beat clean fair and square by a fucking midget. (laughs) Brother underscore. I thought Spud was a midget. Make sense of this. I thought Spud was a midget. (laughs) I have no flipping idea what this was about at all. Um, but I'll say this much 
You know, Spud says no. The crowd responds yes. They love him. They love him. You know, Spud says he hates everybody. I lost to a one-year-old boy. Lost to a man that looks like a one-year-old boy. (laughs) Everything Spud does just works. And so... This is a guy that that you need that you need to keep. Everything works fine for him, and he does a great job. And he's always out there giving you one hundred and fifty percent. Of course, now he quit, right? So we know many times somebody quits that that means they probably didn't actually quit. But man, if they actually did let him quit, that would just be that would just be a travesty. And and Raven effect. One final thing, I, I want to echo Mike Bennett for champ in twenty seventeen. If I don't get the opportunity to say yes we did with him then uh, my life may never be complete you know, you know I, I I spoke a little bit earlier about how Mark Andrews may have been the most underutilized guy on the roster well Rockstar Spud was probably the other most underutilized guy on the roster last year this guy is so underrated. He's one of the best talkers in the company easily. He's one of the most entertaining, one of the most funny. The cr- he can get a rise out of the crowd doing the simplest things. This is not a guy that you put in an... <sighs> is it, what, what even is this angle? It's like they're just going out of their way to humiliate him. For, for, for what? For no reason. What, until he just gets pissed off and quits? You know, whether it was an angle, whether it was a shoot, it's not really, well, that's that's spoiler territory there. But is this really the best they can do for Rockstar Spud? I mean, they're, they're, it's like they're, they're feeding him a shit sandwich and he's still getting it over. So give him something that's actually good to work with, for crying out loud. What is there to be gained by jobbing him out to a, to, to a little person, to a baby, to... Just, just, just use the guy. Give him something decent to work with, for the love of God. Ugh. Besides, they have Robbie E on on contract still, right? Yeah, there you go. If you want to job a job a guy out to a little person, that's what Robbie E is for. <laughs> Nobody cares about him. That's why we've got him. Unless his face is on a hot selling brand of toilet paper, currently on might... sale for three easy payments of twenty nine ninety nine. I think we might be able to charge more for that. We could probably make some money off of that one. That's the uh, Charmin Guido special, correct? <laughs> nah, uh, man, it's, it's single ply. If it's Robbie E, it's got to be single ply. It's, it's, it's got to make your ass bleed or didn't Robbie E. Uh, you're bound to get shit finger if you wipe with Robbie E. Oh, man. Um, dude, every time Rockstar Spud goes out there and grabs a mic or performs, he makes everyone laugh. He entertains everyone. He gets over... It it sucks, man. Like they tried to like promote this guy as this big underdog. Like he challenged fucking Kurt Angle, and they made it seem like he he went the distance and almost you know won the belt off Angle. And a year or two later, he's defeated clean by I'm sorry, a little person. And it, just give me a break, you know. Like I I I, I get the whole thing with with. King Maxwell, like it's on the show that you you don't take serious. Senior Benjamin tasered him, like you know, and Maxwell climbed on him, and apparently Maxwell got a job over the disco dancing fool too. Um, but really, like you you do this on Impact, and he quit, and he said this company sucks, and it's like, well, when you do shit like that, it's kind of hard to argue, you know, even though we all love TNA and are loyal as shit, but um, you know, so so Spud quits. And, like, I wouldn't blame the guy because he just did a job to a midget. Um, but, you know, the thing is, I, I I rarely touch Twitter. I got on there for a split second just to check a, if, if I had heard anything from Chef and Brother Underscore at the time. Uh, so sorry to anyone who may have written me on Twitter for not getting to you. Um, but, like... He he said something about like it's it's been a good four years with TNA and this is my last day or something and Trevor Lee had said something about the new sheriff in town, and so I hope to God that it's not the end of Spud. You know the guy is great and he deserves a lot better and I think him and EC3 as a tag team would have been great. Uh, you know maybe the guy can find a tag team or something at some point, but uh, I'd hate to see him end up on the WWE UK tour as well. You know. 
but um, Spud, you deserve better, and I hope to see you get better. And uh, another guy I think deserves better is a guy who had like a talk show set, and now he's back to just having the dummy button and the little stand in the ring, and that's Eli Drake. Another guy that's uh, rumored to be possibly on his way out with his contract expiring in WWE, having left for him. Um, Eli Drake sets up a one-night-only match in a promo bit with the Broken Hardys. Uh, FK9, what were your thoughts on this one? Uh, my thoughts are that TNA should take all the money that they're offering to Alberto Del Rio and feed it to not only Mike Bennett, but Eli Drake. Because if they let that guy get away, they're absolutely insane. Um, I, I also lament the loss of uh, his talk show set. The talk show set was awesome. I don't know why they're not doing it anymore. Um, good to see Eli Drake finally talking again. Because we only had a few weeks where he was forbidden from talking, but that was a few weeks too many, goddammit. Um, really entertaining stuff. Where you got two personalities like Eli Drake and Matt Hardy in there. You know you're going to get some entertaining stuff. What really blew my mind about this is that it was all to actually set up and promote a match for a one-night-only pay-per-view. And typically, those things just exist in their own bubble, and they're, they're so insular that they might as well not even exist because they're never acknowledged on the actual TV show. But here, there, holy crap, there was actually some connective tissue between Impact and the One Night Onlys. And when you actually do that, when you actually promote the damn show, you might actually convince people to watch it. It seems so simple, and yet TNA have never done this before. Um, but yeah, they, they, they set up a, a tag team match because you know, Eli Drake did not get an engraved invitation for Tag Team Apocalypto, and now he wants the tag team titles. Okay, well, we now, now we know what happened at the One Night Only pay-per-view, and apparently Eli Drake got a, just made a really terrible choice for partners, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Yeah, good for them, pro finally deciding to promote a damn One Night Only pay-per-view. It's about time. You know, guys, uh, <laughs> FK9 hit the nail on the head, buddy. They actually promoted it one night only. Now, sadly, they did it the night before the one night only. But hey, at least they did it. To me, this is what happens when you get a real CEO in. He looks and he goes, uh, I need to increase the numbers. How do I do that? Oh, I know. I'll sell something. Guys, go promote the one night only. We got it tomorrow night. We're not here to do these one night onlys for nothing. Let's try to make something out of it. That's what that comes from. It was a good segment. It promoted something on pay-per-view. <clears throat> What's there not to love about this? As far as Eli Drake going at WWE, oh, good God, please don't let that happen. If there's if there's two guys that are up and coming, they got to keep. You got Eli Drake, you got Mike Bennett. You know, you, you, you got Moose. I mean, these are guys that are just absolute must-keeps. Everybody else on the roster, you know, we got some, we got some retreads. Got some folks WWE's not as interested in. Those three guys, you, you got to do something with them. You know, you got to find a way to keep them. It sounds like they got Moose for a while. I think he signed a two-year deal, so he's locked up. It's, 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 it's Bennett and Eli Drake. Give them something to do. Make them stars, TNA. Make them stars. I think they both went out and self-made themselves as stars, to be honest with you guys. Um, you know... Eli Drake is so damn good. And, uh, you know, you, you guys are right. Look, not only that, but we had Rosemary against Sienna, which we saw in Total Nonstop Deletion, which actually led to a match that happened on One Night Only Live. And Heel Cast Nation, we will review One Night Only Live because I'm ecstatic about the show. It may not be any of us on there, but we will get a review out there. Um, unfortunately, it had fucking Tyrus as Eli Drake's partner, which sucked. Um, but you know that this was good of course broken matt eli drake bound to have some chemistry of course it ends up with uh, eli drake getting it and of course broken matt has to hit the dummy yeah button because why in the hell would broken matt not hit the dummy yeah button because he's broken matt and he deserves to um push eli drake eli drake for world champion in 2017 along with that list too um so it's bennett E, Lai, Drake, James Storm, Davey Richards, EC3. Those should be your champs in 2017. Dummy, yeah, that's just a fact of life. But uh, there we go. So uh, Hardy's uh, won, by the way, guys. Hardy's won. 
So uh, Tyrus, not a champ in TNA. Uh, then we had a match I've been looking forward to seeing for a long time. Uh, I think, Brother Underscore, you've kind of been on it, too. We had DK against the Helms Dynasty. DK coming out, unfortunately, to a new theme song as well. But uh, what would you think of the match? Uh, it, it was a good match. I mean, it definitely was. It, I think the sadness of this is that they just kind of used the Helms Dynasty as just a transition between the Decay and the DCC. You know, and I think if that's kind of <clears throat> what maybe we didn't want to say. You know, I think if they've got tag teams in TNA, I think if they just need to do something with them <clears throat> instead of just being the Hardys and Decay, right? And then when maybe now that Davey's back, maybe we'll get the Wolves turned in there too. But let's let let's use them. Let's give them something to do. Uh, other than that, it was a very good match. You know, it was just a matter of it looks like the DCC is gunning for decay and the Helms Dynasty is once again being thrown to the side. You know, what's it going to take to get Trevor Lee and, and really more correctly and particularly Andrew Everett some airtime? Trevor Lee is a former champion. Andrew Everett's got like nothing. And every time this guy goes, he steals a show. He's awesome. I don't know how Dale Oliver still has a job. This guy has been producing subpar music, subpar theme songs for TNA for years. For every good one he comes up with, he writes like five bad ones. Having said that, Decay's new theme song is one of his good ones. It's it's not the Manson song, it's not the Nobodies, but it's a good track, and when you hear that, you're going to know it's the Decay coming out. I actually kind of like it. Um... Now, as for this match, uh, appar- well, apparently Trevor Lee and Andrew Everett didn't take it personally when Shane Helms buried them alive at Tag Team Apocalypto. Uh, good for them being the bigger person. If that, if that was me, I'd hold a grudge. But uh, I don't know if I'd be able to let that go. But, hey, uh, I guess they're better people than I am. Um, a, a good match, a fresh matchup. I liked seeing it. Uh, I'm I'm fine with Decay winning. I like Decay winning. I like them being booked strong. I I don't necessarily think the Helms Dynasty needed to win. I wanted to see a longer match, though, and I wanted to see them be booked stronger than they were because they are hard up for tag teams, and this is a great potential tag team right here that, frankly, TNA are just not utilizing. Um, so I, I, I don't know why. Um, I that, he'll, he'll throw him in this tag team feud with with Decay and DCC. Make it a three way. It, it could only make the feud better. Uh, but hopefully that'll happen. So good match. I just I want to see the Helms Dynasty be be booked stronger uh, than they are currently. Um, as for the as for DCC, uh, okay, cool. Um, I didn't like it when they were kind of uh, reduced to the the butt of a joke at Tag Team Apocalypto, but. I think this feud will be good. I mean, you got three, uh, you got two guys who are awesome promo cutters in the DCC, and one guy who's another guy in Bram who's also really good. Um, of course, you know the the, the, the the case Mike skills are unquestionable, but th- this could be some. There could be some really entertaining stuff promo wise that could be gleaned from this. I expect the matches will be good too. Um, hey, it's it's another tag team feud. Good. It, it's an interesting tag team feud in a division that is uh, pretty barren at the moment. So I think that can only be a good thing. Anyone else notice Andrew Everett was kind of packing some love handles with him? That's kind of what I got. Um, I've been waiting for this match a long time, though. Should have given it more time. These, All four of these guys, all both of these teams including Rosemary, need a lot more time. And this match should develop more. Um, you know, you guys mentioned that the DCC came out and attacked them. I don't know if they're trying to turn DK face or what. Um, I think they are, actually. I think so, too. Uh, and I thought that was the route they were going. But then, you know, we had the uh, the Rosemary and uh, Gale thing happen on one night only. So I don't know where they're going, but uh, it seems to DCC. Oh, I've got something to say about that, actually. <laughs> I would not be surprised. Um, but... Uh, it was enjoyable. It, it should have went longer, and I, I want to see Everett and Lee get the push that they deserve um, and, and really flourish as a tag team the way that they should. Uh, and you're right. You know, FK9, I 
look, Marilyn Manson is by far my favorite musician artist in the world. He has been for years. I don't think it gets any better than him. I know a lot of people don't agree. That's fine. Um, but the, I, I do like the new theme song as well. It's never going to be Manson to me, but I like it. I agree with FK9. It's fitting for DK. It's disappointing, but you know what? It works, and it could be a whole lot worse. But the Dale Elliver comment, I had to mute my mic instantly because I started cracking up. Um, but uh, so, you know, we, we mentioned Rosemary and all that, and uh, her good friend Allie uh, actually was in a match with sienna her challenger the following night uh fk9 let's go back to you here uh ali versus sienna thoughts they had they had a really subtle hogan versus andre thing going on here i don't know if a lot of people picked up on that but they were doing this thing where ali ellie's trying to slam like they pick up sienna and slam her and she can't do it and then finally um, she gets pissed off and she kind of hulks up and she finally does it. I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, I was I was impressed with the booking here, in that you've got okay you've got you get you got the outside interference going on. Okay, you got Sutter out there being Ali's coach or or or, or whatever he is now, and you've got the storyline with Laurel Van Ness who she, who's been kind of hitting on him just to piss Ali off and. Meanwhile, you get the you get the stuff going on in the ring. Now, Laurel tries flirting with him, distracts Allie, and you think, oh well, that's that's gonna be where it ends. Dude, she's gonna get distracted and Sienna's gonna take advantage and that's it. But no, Sienna almost pins her, she kicks out. I think just the fact that she kicked out that first time is enough to get Allie um it's enough to take her a step forward. And yeah, the okay, the same thing happens later on, and that's when Allie uh, kind of falls forward and she loses. But the fact that she kicked out that first time is good because the beauty of the Alley character is that she doesn't have to win all the time because she's playing the novice, like the novice wrestler, the rookie. So just the fact that she's standing up for herself now and putting up a fight and is not the easiest person in the world to beat is good. It's enough to get the people to rally behind her. That's that's the brilliance of this character. Um, so I think ev I think everybody got something out of this sienna got a win uh on her way into the the match with rosemary and you know they're they're, they're still advancing the alley story and people are still eating it up one thing that was confusing to me though is uh sutter's behavior because you know laurel van ness is is flirting with him and i i, do, I, I wouldn't have blamed him for for falling for it because good god if you see that dress holy shit um but yeah, she's flirting with him, and he's not really having it. And then she kind of turns the charm up to 11, and he's still not really having it. But then he goes with the heels after the match anyway. And he doesn't really look happy about it. And he's kind of looking like he's, he's, look, he's looking pissed off at what happened to Allie, but then he's still, he, he, he still goes with them. I, I was confused about that part. Um, but yeah, I think the match i think the match worked for everybody i think they all got something out of it they were able to advance a couple stories there so uh really good booking in this segment you know come to think of it that that girl at that convenience store in watertown looked a lot like laurel van ness um i'm just throwing that out there guys look Bottom line is, FK9, you pretty much hit the nail on the head on this one completely. It's been all about the booking. But here's what I want to know. Which agent is in charge of these segments? Who's behind this? Is, is Madison behind this? Because whoever is behind this is getting all the little nuances right. I mean, you've got Allie being built up, but she loses. But it's not like the little engine that could. It's not one of those cases where she's not just quite good enough. You don't really get the impression that she's not good enough, but she still loses. But it's not just all about the interference either, because she overcame a lot, and Sienna was still booked really strong. You've got Sienna spitting on Allie. You know, you've got Allie stomping on Sienna's foot. No idea what that's about, but it worked. And then you've got the incredible, terrific mic work of Maria Canellis. I, I had to rewind this a couple times to make sure I got the quote right, but where she says that she's looking forward to what they're going to do in 2017, except for that one little tiny gnat she must take care of first. 
and that's Allie. And Allie, get your stupid ass down here. I mean, you know, who really talks and says, get your stupid ass down here? But, you know, everything about this, the details behind this story, guys, they've been perfect. You know, you think Braxton Sutter, he's boring. Sorry, he's still boring, even in this. But they're, the way that they're utilizing him as a trainer who's helping her, and and you can just see that she likes him and he likes her, but Laurel's trying to get in between them. All the details are right on this. And this is what happens when you get all the details right. And to that, it's not just about the writing staff. That also comes down to, you know, which agent is in charge of the match. And so kudos to everybody involved in this. This has really been some outstanding stuff. Yeah, they're... Uh... Almost making Braxton Sutter relevant, uh, having a character. I don't know. Um, I hate Alabama. <laughs> I enjoyed this match. Uh, <laughs> Sienna is my girl. Allie is my girl. Love seeing them in there. Like seeing Sienna get a win. Uh, didn't pick up on the Hogan Andre thing. You guys kind of summed it up. I'm super pissed over Alabama. Um, fuck Alabama. Well Fuck the tide, uh, cousin fucking hillbillies. But um, <clears throat> I I love Allie. I love Sienna. I love seeing them get TV time. Uh, it's good to see more feuds in the knockouts other than just what is, uh, you know, the knockouts title match. And it's nice to see Maria and Allie developing. I kind of thought like Allie already branched out away from her. Uh, I thought Sienna spitting on Allie really added to it. Um, the, the crowd is just so behind Allie. Um, it's just, I think that it, they've just got to pull the trigger on this soon. Um, any any uh, conclusions before we go to the uh, heavyweight championship match? Yeah, while we're on the subject of Sienna and, um, and the attention to detail with the booking, I think it's really interesting uh, what they just did. Uh, not, not to get off topic, but on the one night only show, I was watching the knockouts match from one night only earlier today uh, with the title match with uh, Sienna versus Rosemary. And it's really, it, it's, it's kind of fascinating to me what happened here. I don't know if this was by design or not. I think it, it's just, it's just really amazing what happened. They have Rosemary. They basically, they have Gail Kim coming out and saying that, you know, she's, She's, oh, I'm, I'm, I retire when my career is over, when I say it's over, and I'm coming back for my title. Damn you, Rosemary. And then Rosemary comes out, and she basically punks out Gail Kim in, in true heelish fashion. And then by the, end of the, by the end of this segment, she has the crowd chanting Rosemary, Rosemary, like she's the baby face. <laughs> I don't know how... I, I, I don't know how this happened, but... Uh, this is why I suspect that the, that the decay may be turning face. Maybe, may, maybe this was all intentional. Maybe it was just Rosemary's boundless charisma that pulled this off. But uh, apparently, she's seeming more babyface-ish, and that, that's a good way to delay the um, the alley, the, the the Rosemary Alley feud that we all want to see. Uh, for a while longer, which is good because they, they got to pick the right time, right place with that. I think Slammiversary would be okay. Bound for Glory would be better in my opinion, but they, they got to keep that one in their back pocket and just do it when the time is perfect and the characters are in the right place. And they're not there yet, but they're making progress with Allie. And I think if Rosemary is going to have a short run as a baby face, that'll work too. It'll get them out of each other's way for a while longer. That's good. Um, so, yeah, just more attention to booking like that. Attention to detail with the booking like that, please. I think it's really impressive what they just pulled off with Rosemary on that show. So, I have a question for you, Raven Effect. Is Chris Saban Nick Saban's love child? Roll Tide. God, no. God, no. At least Saban has an eye instead of that. I don't even want to get started. But, uh, yeah, no, Chris... Hail Saban is a whole lot better than uh, Hell Saban, Devil Saban, Cheen Fuck Saban. Uh, backed out on Joey Harrington and the Dolphins. 
because he didn't get Drew Brees and the quarterback he wanted, crybaby, I'm going to go coach Alabama or I can get anyone I want and make an unfair advantage. Greatest college coach ever, Saban. Fuck you, Nick Saban. Uh, you know who I do like, though, is Ethan Carter the third, Ethan Anthem the third. He's a whole lot better person than Nick Saban is, Royal Tide. <laughs> Nick Saban might be better than Dixie Carter, though. Royal Tide. He's, he's definitely better than Bill Belichick. No, nah, Belichick, Belichick's better than Saban. Uh, Belichick's a man. You know that Nick Saban and Bill Belichick are tight, right? Of course I do. Okay. Motherfucker, you know I know football. I know you uh, know football. I'm just making sure that I remind you that so, Bill Belichick trained Nick Saban. I know that. I feel so bad for our UK contingent. Luckily, they're getting more NFL games next year. Absolutely. Uh, more Jacksonville Jaguars for all of you. Better love it. The Buffalo Bills, too. Hey, but, it's almost uh, first and goal, right? Yeah, it is almost. Yeah. So let's go Clemson. Um, but back, to, let's go with, uh, we, uh, we're talking the college football national championship game. Let's talk the TNA championship match. Lashley, Eddie Edwards, EC3. For some reason, these guys have to be in the world title match every time. Um, it's a live show. I went into it expecting that the right thing was going to happen and that Ethan Anthem the third was going to walk out as your TNA Impact Heavyweight Champion. We did get the return of Davey Richards, who I thought would turn on Eddie Edwards, but he did not. And diehard Eddie Edwards retains. Brother underscore, you're an Eddie Edwards guy. You know what? Just a side note. The dude's name is Edward Edwards. That just dawned on me the other day. But uh, what do you think of Edward Edwards retaining? So, first of all, I, I I was a big fan back in the day of the weekend escapades with Kevin Steen. And they always ended with with uh, Kevin saying, say, say hi, Eddie, or say bye, Eddie. And Eddie would just smile and say bye. Uh, Eddie came off as one of the, the, the truly uh, nice guys and just just a really all-around good guys of professional wrestling. It's always nice to root and see a good guy win. I, I do think he could use some more character development, and, and I'm not going to lie about that. But he's a good worker. He's a hard worker. And, and, and damn it, he wears Boston Celtic socks every single time he wrestles. So just imagine what those socks are going to look like at the end of the week, guys. Um, any rate, that's that's my affinity towards uh, towards Eddie Edwards. I expected Eddie Edwards to go over and win here. I didn't expect us to wind up with a new champion just right away. To me, it was more about how they wound up actually booking this thing, uh, and it was about the fact that here we go. We got Eddie Edwards and Bobby Lashley again for seemingly the umpteen millionth time. I don't understand why. I, I think that they needed to bring EC3 in just to freshen this feud up a bit, if you want to call it a feud. I've personally seen enough of it. I'd like to see both men move on to somebody different and do something that's you know more intriguing than the same thing over and over. But you know what? They deliver every time out. I haven't seen Eddie Edwards and Bobby Lashley in a match together that wasn't just a great match. It really, and this was another great match. You had EC3 into the mix. His wrestling abilities really come leaps and bounds since he joined TNA. So, you know, you had a lot of good spots here. Uh, electric chair, top roof, superplex, uh, I think is what is what they called it when Lashley pulled EC3 down as EC3 was superplexing Eddie. Um, you know, we saw Lashley do a, a double German suplex. It was always very interesting that Eddie was always the guy on top, I guess because he's a little bit lighter and would get thrown a little further. Uh, ultimately... You know, it looks like maybe they're teasing that Lashley is going to move on and maybe feud with Davey Richards because Davey distracted Lashley and Eddie was able to hit Lashley with the Boston knee party. So, you know, ultimately, I expected Eddie to go over in this. Eddie did go over in this. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, though, you know, I'm just kind of tired of seeing Eddie beat Lashley. And I don't know that I want to see Lashley beat Eddie. I think I just want to see these guys go off in a different direction. I think I'd like to see the the, the world title maybe move on to somebody like EC3. Just to freshen it up. I mean, it's just been this... Then pretty much Lashley forever. And now that he doesn't have it, it's with Eddie. And Eddie's just fighting Lashley. But uh, great match, guys. And it was a great way to kick off uh, the new year. The super, super psyched that they gave this match an extra 10 minutes. Uh, for, for, for the show. They did the live show. Um, it was it was an all-around great great end of the show. It really was. 
you, you kind of took the words out of my mouth there. Um, when I was watching this, I, I kept saying to myself, God, you know, it, it feels like this Eddie Lashley thing has been going on for months and months. And then I realized, well, that's because it has been going on for months and months. And yeah, they, they have nothing but great matches, but it's just... It feels like it's just been dragged out too long, like beyond its natural endpoint. And I'm just, I'm, I'm with you on this. Is that I'm just, hey, I like both these guys. I'm just tired of seeing them fight each other. Like, can we, can we at least add some kind of new dynamic to it, other than Lashley getting upset by Eddie again and again and again? It's, it's on the verge of uh, losing credibility because Eddie is supposed to be the underdog in these matches, but when he stops being the underdog and starts. And Lashley starts looking like the underdog. That's when you've done something wrong. That's when it's gone off the rails a little bit. Um, you know, EC3 being in there helped, but you know he's also at a point where you know he's he's got a lot of uh, recent history with both these guys too. So they they are they are at a point where something needs to change. Something needs to be refreshed about this. Uh, great match though. I just they, I think. Maybe if you hit the reset button or add someone else to this feud, I think it would really help a lot. Uh, something that bothered me, though, as much as I love seeing Davey back, they basically telegraphed that in the opening segment. I mean, they all but said, yeah, yeah Davey's coming back. They say, hey, Wolves Nation, I got a big surprise for you a little bit later in the show. Wink. So, so everyone was expecting Davey. So at that point, you've kind of spoiled the ending because you, everybody knows that nothing important is really going to happen until Davey shows up. And why, when you have a live show, when there there are no spoilers out there, when everything is is happening you know, as it's being filmed, and anything that happens is going to be a legit surprise. Why would you go out of your way to spoil something like that? When you've got a guy who's been out for basically a year, making his big return in a big spot in the main event, and you basically tell everyone that it's going to happen, it, it just it felt like they just let the air out of the balloon there. That would have been so much more effective if they had just let it be a huge surprise. Hell, let it be a surprise to Eddie, too. If he just, if, if, if Davey just like pops out of the crowd or something, I mean, just the, the way they telegraphed that just bugged me to no end. I don't know why they did it. Um, great match. I just, the way that was, that whole thing was uh, written and structured, just, I, I had a problem with that. I enjoyed the match. I thought it was a very good match. I think uh, it wasn't as good as Moose and Bennett, but this was two really good matches on this show. Um, it's I, I'm I'm a Davy guy. Davy Richards is my guy. I'm glad he's back. I'm glad Eddie Edwards got the championship. I want it off of him. I. Eddie Edwards and Bobby Lashley has literally became the WWE. It's a WWE feud. They've had so many matches, it's no longer special. I'm tired of seeing these two. I'm glad EC3 was in there. It's 2017. New regime. Live show. First show of the year. You don't do live shows that often. I'm sorry. It's time to put the belt on your biggest star, your most marketable guy, and that's Ethan Anthem Carter III. They did not do that. I didn't want to see it go back to Lashley. Lashley had the belt for a long time. It should have went to EC3 last year. You should have had EC3 beat Eddie. Um, <clears throat> but it's still with Eddie. It, it's frustrating. The, the Eddie thing, there's a lot of backlash towards it. Like You, you hear it from Chef and his his guys. Like Eddie's not that big in the impact zone. And I'm not saying that he isn't because you still get the Eddie chance. And Eddie's over. And Eddie's had some fantastic matches as a champion. And I've enjoyed it. But... Um, it's it's time to go, and I wish they would have pulled the trigger, and I wish that we would have gotten a new champ, and I wish it would have been EC3. I, I don't want to see Lashley and Eddie Edwards anymore. I really, I mean, maybe Lashley and EC3 a couple more times, but we've seen that a lot, too. Um, it, it's time to go fresh. It's, it's time to move forward and do something else, and, you know, the, uh, it, it just, I, I was disappointed that Eddie retained, and you know, I, I 
when I, I remember on Twitter or Facebook or something, like there there was a photo leading into Thursday night where it showed that there was going to be a mystery man, a mystery man, and it was going to be a four way match, but then it just went to the three way, and that was disappointing. But um, you know, it's just uh, it just doesn't seem like EC three Ethan Anthem the third is the face of the company anymore. I think he should be. I think he is. I don't know if they think Lashley is or what. Uh, maybe it's Broken Matt, but it just it stinks. But I think EC3 should have went out as champ. And that's my final thought. And, um, yeah, I think they fucked up bad with EC3. I think it's kind of similar to what they did with the Pope. TNA, read what you're doing. What, what they've done with EC3 and sending him back would be like in the Attitude Era, Vince taking Stone Cold of the Rock and throwing them backwards. It doesn't make sense. He was your biggest star for a reason. I'm not saying that he's he's as big or TNA can even fuck with the level that the Attitude Era was ever on, but he was the closest thing they were going to get to their homegrown guy, and it sucks. And EC3 should be the champ. Uh, Brother Underscore, you got any final words before we uh, set off the uh, heel cast for the week? It's about damn time you got a rant in. As long as we've been doing this show, you finally got your rant in. When we were talking about broken bee holes, I thought that was ranting enough. Nah, you enjoy that. I do. Yeah. That broken Braxton butthole. <laughs> You'd like to break Braxton's butthole, wouldn't you? As long as it got him off TV. Look, we're ruining our branding. We're all about dick jokes on this. this is, we're not about butthole jokes. <laughs> Weenie in the butt. I know. That's for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that it is. Uh, FK9, any final thoughts? Uh, just that I totally agree. It really felt like there should have been a title change in that match, and I'm kind of bummed out that there wasn't one. I agree. Um, and I thought that the title was going to change hands at One Night Only Live. I thought they were really going to do something big on One Night Only Live, and I thought in the one-on-one -on -one match with EC3 and Eddie Edwards, I thought they were going to pull the trigger and EC3 was going to win, and I was like... I had to put it on pause and avoid spoilers because my girlfriend just didn't want to watch wrestling. And so, um, you know, it was it was like I was sitting there with anticipation and then she fell asleep and I watched it and to see Eddie retain over EC3 again, it was like, fuck this. But it was a great show when I'd only live. But um, Hillcast Nation, we have rambled on a lot. This is a long show. Thanks for sticking with us. For those of you that actually did, uh, I want to thank our special guest, FK9, the man himself. Um, that guy brother underscore that douchebag raven effect heel cast nation thanks for turning back anthem tna we're back 2017 let's do big things have a great week everyone tune in next week <laughs>